little paw just gently resting on my lap so that he's got a little anchor for himself. Um, well, hello. Hi, guys. Welcome back. It's um, Wednesday night at six o'clock and this is. is Massey Art Studio. Yep. I'm Lee. I'm Jeremy. And this is Tate, if you've never met him before. Um, thank you so much for being here with us. It is Wednesday night at six o'clock. So that's four o'clock Pacific, which means that we'll be getting ready for the pajama party. Yeah. Polcon will be over. Um, if you've been there with us, we hope that you've had an amazing time. If you haven't been there with us, we hope you get to see a load of pictures and videos too. Yeah. We've really enjoyed these side-by-side -side comparisons. This time we're taking the same colors and doing two different techniques, very different techniques. Ring pour. Yes. And straight pour. Yes. Um, we want to show you the differences between the two and um, we really want to highlight those differences by using the same color palette yeah. which is going to be really awesome um, i know you will have probably have seen a ton of ring paws and maybe seen a ton of straight paws too but um, have you ever seen them side by side maybe not maybe not we're taking advantage of us being both on the channel today so please sit back and, and watch as we pour out some Beautiful paws using some really awesome colors. Yeah, these colors are beautiful. Really cool. We'll see you at the table. Well, hello there, ladles and jelly spoons. Hey, guys. Well, and as you've just heard, because of the popularity of the side-by-side -side paint pouring that we've been doing. I know. And really, is one of the only channels with two people doing it. Yeah. So it's not like you can see this everywhere. Um, we wanted to do another side-by-side -side comparison. This time, as you've just heard, I'm going to be doing a ring pour. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> and I'm going to be doing a straight pour. Surprise, surprise. Kels the Prees. Kels the Prees. Color me surprise. So um, we're going to use the same colors. We're just going to do two different techniques this time so that you can see specifically the differences between what a ring pour looks like and what a straight pour looks like. I'm excited about these colors though, Show Pony. I really am. I love this color palette. I do too. So we've got 14 by 18 inch canvases again. Yes. We've got the colors off. We have quinacridone Nicoazzo gold. We've got deco arts 24 karat gold. We have uh, the phalo turquoise by Goldens. We've got, this is titanium white by Amsterdam mixed with a little bit of silver by yes. Amsterdam. We have uh, metallic cobalt blue by Artist Lofts. This one here is green gold by yep. Goldens. And this one is skylight blue by Amsterdam. Oh, delicious. <coughs> what a wonderful introduction, yeah. sir. Thank you for that. Did you know that. that you can get all of your Amsterdam paint through, uh, oh my God. I'm not I helping just went you. Blank. I'm not helping you. Fluid-art.com. There you go. <laughs> Here, have, have, a sip of my, have a sip of my coffee. I know, I'm not awake yet. I'm yeah, not awake go yet. Go for it, go for it. It's 117 degrees here in the studio and it's 8.30 in the morning. Wow, that was hot. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're both going to layer our cups. Yes. That is the one thing that we are going to do. And I think we should layer them the same way. Okay. With the technique being the difference. Okay. So let's layer them the, the same. Do you want to lead or do you want me to lead? Can I lead on Absolutely, yeah, let's go for <coughs> All it. All right. And we are going to layer layer. So these are All going right. to be poured down the side of the cup. Interesting, starting off with a lot of phalo turquoise. That's going to be the center of Jeremy's ring. Yes. And it's going to be what's going to come out of my cup last. I'm going to follow you. So if you're right. putting in that much, I'll put in that much. All right. Ooh, the white and silver mix. Now I want to do a little bit of the golds. Okay, I'm gonna give it to you first because I'm gonna show I'm gonna see how much you do. I'm just putting like pip. A, a pip. Or as Lisa Marvin would call it, a bloop. 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 She's so cute. I actually absolutely love Lisa Marvin. If you haven't seen her, Lisa Marvin art, oh my god. She does amazing things. And if you're watching this, it is Wednesday <laughs> just before the pajama closing party at Porcon. Yeah. Um, Jeremy, Jeremy and I may or may not be at this premiere because we'll be currently donning our pajamas and actually in the Grand Ballroom doing our farewells to everyone from yes. Porcon. So if we're not here with you, that is the reason why. Please excuse us. Um, but Lisa Marvin is one of the amazing 22 artists that are all going to be at Pork on. And I'm loving my little outfit that I'm wearing for the sleep, the pajama party. All right, Hugh. I'm going to say nothing more than Hugh Hefner will be rolling in his grave. <laughs> <laughs> I am giving you, <clears throat> excuse me. I, uh, I will be giving you some Hugh Hefner. You will. 
a little froggy in your throat there. I know. So, gosh, you might now be thinking, well, PolCon is over. What do I have look to look forward to? What do we have to look forward to? Well, you know, a lot of painting on our channel, clearly a lot of fun stuff that's going to happen just on the day by day. But I'm going to ask you all to keep the last weekend in October free if you can get to Dallas. Yeah. Because um, Fluid Art with Friends might be making a little debut. We'll say no more I about know. it right now. I know. But there will be some more to come. Oops, that was a little... Do I have to More do than that? Loop. No, you do not. Well, I really should, I guess. I'm going to no, do it. No, whoa, that's a lot. I'm, I'm going to do it. It's a controlled experiment. It's not more. It's exactly the same. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So, what Jeremy's doing here, if you notice, is he's pouring light and dark, light and dark, somewhat, all this cup. Yes. You don't have to put the isolation layer, which is the white in between similar colors. So if he was gonna do similar blues, you wouldn't need to put an isolation layer. But when Jeremy switches from like a blue to something else that might not yeah. make such a great color, then he'll put an isolation layer in. Not always, it's not always necessary because these paints are mixed particularly thickly. But sometimes he'll do it. Yeah. Um, Tara always asks us to show what the consistency of our paint is. And you know what, we always forget, so I'm gonna do it. As soon as this cup is layered, I'm going to there do it. There it. And I think I'm just going to do a little bit of white at the end. Okay. The white silver mix. Once again, I think we've got a really good symbiotic. Yeah, I like, think we did good. I think we did. I think we're like almost exactly at the same. All right, let me move these cups out of the way, but I'm going to keep one of them. Which is the best color, do you think, to show the thickness of the paint? I'm going to use that cobalt blue. Okay. I think that, because it's got the most in there. So. Tara and everyone out there who wants to know, these paints are this thick. So they are leaving a mound and then it disappears. There's definitely a trace in the bottom of the cup also. It's not thin like a Dutch pour. It's not super thick either, but it's definitely thick enough that these colors will hold their own as we pour them out. Yes. And that is mixed fairly heavily, like 50, 60, 65% Floetrol then it's 20, 25% paint and just a squirt of Liquitex gloss, me gloss medium. All right, so what are we using as our flow extender? Well, I think we should, oh, you're gonna flow, no, what are you doing? Ring pour. I'm doing a ring pour. Let's do, oh, flow extender. We're gonna use one of the colors. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna mix some of these colors together as flow extenders. Okay, all right. Yeah, so we're actually gonna get these paints on these canvases first. Yes. Yeah, you're right, you're right. And what a flow extender is, if you don't know, flow extender is when you, after you pour, after you pour your uh, your paint onto the canvas and that makes a circle, right? You're gonna put a flow extender, which is paint around that, so that way it helps it to move around the canvas. But um, but it stays, like some of it stays stationary, kind of sticks to that center spot. Because we're gonna um, like get the paint on a dry canvas, then yeah. yes, it absolutely will. Yes. I think you should go first, Show Pony. Okay. And as you're doing this, a ring pour, may I have your phone? Yes. Because um, I'm going to take a side shot for everyone at home. Okay. Would you kind of do somewhat of an explanation of what the ring pour entails and how it might be different from what I'm going to do? Yes. Thank you. All right. All right, you go for it. This cup is slippery. All right, he's not doing what I asked him to do because what? he's so hyper-focused right now. But as you can see, what he's doing is making the cup, he's pouring the cup in a circular motion. Yeah. That's why it's called a ring pour. So he can change the direction of the, oh, he just did it real time. Change the direction of the ring, but what he's doing is creating rings of color on the canvas. He's staying somewhat stationary with his kind of paint. And now he's going to try and grab it in order to dismount. Yes. Stunning. I know you're loving that. Yeah. It's pretty, right? I'm loving it. Would you like to wipe your finger? I would love to rub my fingers off. <laughs> because I'd like you to do the same with my straight paw, if you don't mind. Okay. 
Would you like to wipe your forehead? Oh my gosh, yeah, Wipe your brow? Oh, I'm gonna drip all over this composition, I know it. It's so hot here in Texas. It is right? hot. I know we say that a lot. I'm my sorry. glasses are slipping if off If you feel like we're whining and complaining, I apologize. <laughs> all right, sir, um, you're gonna, oh, actually, will you come on this side? Because yes. I can't, I can't do it with my other hand. Yes. So I am right-handed, so I'm going to pick the cup up this way. So the difference here is that Jeremy was wringing his paint out of his cup. I'm just going to pour this one straight from the cup, but I will go up and down to create differences okay. in the composition. So I'm going to go right now. Okay. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Wow, two 10 out of 10s on the dismounts. Who would have thunk it? I know. Right? Thank you, sir. You are welcome, sir. All right. I'm loving the fact that these two color wise wow, are like are identical. I love it. So we've both now got to use some kind of wetness around this composition yeah. in order to help us stretch these ones out. Yeah. So, Jeremy, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have us use some of the leftover colors. Um, because we've used these colors a couple of times now, so I'm just going to um, combine a couple of these together, if you can bear with me a second. Did you wanna to torch them off and tell yeah. everyone why? Well, you wanna to torch this off to pop the bubbles, so that way it doesn't leave pock marks on your canvas when it dries. So that's what I'm doing. I'm popping the bubbles. Hey, we've just, we've got those paints on that canvas by throwing it on in a ring or by pouring it straight from a cup. And there's bound to be bubbles in this composition. And if you don't pop them now, what will happen is they will dry with crazy little pop marks in them. All right. All right. All right. All right. I love the, the composition that you have in the center of this canvas. It's beautiful. Thank you, sir. Right, so what I've got here now is a culmination of some of the leftover colors. Yes. It's turned this really wonderful green. I actually like it a lot, but I'm just gonna pour this one around the edge, making sure that I'm gonna get all my canvas covered. There you go. Awesome. And then, God, could you remember who we first saw use this Oxo spatula? Because I can. Was it Canella? It was. Canella Siraco, almost, almost three years to the day we started our art channel. And one of the very first things that we bought, because Canella used to rave about this thing. It was the Oxo spatula. And we've, and we've had it ever since. This thing yeah. has lasted us a lifetime. It has, whoops, it has. I'm like throwing things everywhere. And this spatula is actually made for flipping omelets. It is. But it's also perfect for spreading base coats onto. Start canvases. spreading the pain. <laughs> and leaving the day. I want to be... So, what are you most looking forward to about Vegas, Jeremy? Because we'll be there right now. Ching, 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 ching. You mean winning on a slot machine? Uh-huh. Jeremy no. has the best look on slot machine. It's so funny. Whenever I used to go, I used to live in Los Angeles, so I would go to Vegas probably once a month with a bunch of friends who we just used to love to party and we would go drinking and we'd go gambling. It would just be a lot of fun. I was always the one that everyone was like, oh my God, I can't believe you win again. You always win. How are you? How is this case? And I'd like take $500 and I'd walk away with like 800 or 900 or I'd break even, you know, over the course of a weekend. Ever since I met Jeremy, He's, he's swallowed my look. <laughs> and literally, every time we've been to a casino, I'm sitting on a machine next to him and he's like, I'm just gonna put $20 in here. 
wins 900. <laughs> I'm just going to put $20 in this one. Like, what's the most we ever won on one? Because it went on one slot machine, was it together? It was like 1600 bucks or something? Yeah, something like that. Now, I did put $10 in a machine once and won 800 with you. That was when we were in Choctaw. Oh, Choc yeah. Choctaw. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Jeremy is definitely the luckier of the two. I don't know about that. But... Well, you found me, so I'm you. You're welcome. <laughs> I hope he didn't just jinx me. Everybody's going to come to Porcon. Listen, you're going to have no time to be on slot machines, sir. Let me tell you that. Oh, I'll find some time. Which is not a bad I which is not a bad thing, because at least then we'll definitely won't be spending a ton of money. That True. Don't have. Okay, so popping the bubbles again for Jeremy. So even in his own composition, there's bubbles that have appeared, just because it's been sitting. And I'm popping all the bubbles in the base coat. Now, do you want to tilt these together, Jeremy, or do you want to tilt them separately? Yeah, we can totally tilt them together because yours is running off. It is. All right, so let's do this. All One right. of the things that someone has said is that they do enjoy listening to why we're doing what we're doing. So I'm not going to speed this one up and I'm not going to put funky music on it. We're just going to tilt. But as you feel like you want to say something, say it. Okay. All right. All right, I'm going to say it. <laughs> So we're going to go, you're going to go that way and Probably. I'm going to go that way. Exactly. So I'm so drinking coffee in this 117 let's do degree this. heat. I'm going to have a cup of coffee as soon as we're done with this. Are you kidding me? You need coffee. I do need coffee. You need Jesus. I need coffee. Like crazy. All right, I'm going to bring mine back. Bring, bring it back. It back. Bring it back to me. All right. That's so funny. You know, uh, your your technique is very slow and methodical, and I'm just like very like bull in a china shop. Yeah. There's something wrong with that. I like to I, I like to open it up to the point where I can see what I want to stretch. Yeah. And what I want to get off. Yeah. Are we going to the opposite corners now? Yes. Okay. Let's. I'll kiss you in the middle, sir. Oh, oops, my paint. Wait, the weight of my paint was like. Did you see that, people's at home? I hope you saw that his, the weight of his paint wasn't in the middle. So actually, as he tilted it out, it went a little willy wonky. Yep. I'm gonna be left with a lot of turquoise. Why is that? Because I put too much turquoise in the very beginning of the cup. Oh, there you go. Oh, you turned it around. Okay, good, good, I'll do this there. Yeah. I do like the center of it though. Good, because it's all your piece is gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> One big center. <laughs> Pretty okay. much. Which, which corner are you going to now? Because I can the do right. either. Okay, I'm going to go to the right also. So I'm going to go continue to go nice and slow and steady because I don't want to lose too much of what is happening down there over the corner. So if I take it nice and slow, I've got more control. I'm going to take this off, some of this blue off. Well, you can't, yeah, you're going to take it off, but then you're just going to anchor it. As you know. I'm hoping to open that up a little bit, bring some of that white and gold. Okay. All right. Okay, back to I'm kind of liking this though. Back to the center. I love my wisps. I do too. Willow the Wisp. Did you have a cartoon here called Willow the Wisp? No. It's just that must have been, been some funky thing. English thing. Oh, it was definitely one of those cartoons where you know the writers were all on some kind of hallucinogenic. It was very weird. Okay, so taking this now down to the bottom corner. You know who I saw just do a beautiful straight pour who? was Art by Julie E. Oh my God. <sighs> Stunning. Stunning. Oh. Just be and using some of my favorite colors. She did some very kind of like what do they call it? Uh, like 
southwest southwest jewelry yeah. yeah it was very red oh. turquoise white it was only three or four five four four or five colors but she spun it out on a circular canvas oh no oh my yeah. god it was beautiful she used tiffany's kind of cloud pour mix in a pour which basically gave her this wonderful kind of cloudy bouldery cells and fingerlings all over it and it was just plain oh it was stunning stunning yeah, yeah I, one I of think, the most beautiful pieces i've ever seen yeah and i think it's it was by far my favorite of all of julie e's and she does some really awesome oh, she stuff. does some beautiful stuff go follow art by julie e if you want to see acrylic not sorry acrylic inks um, oh god she does beautiful oh, ink work so good i wish i had that ability to do those beautiful beautiful alcohol inks please go follow her we're so lucky to be part of a wonderful little train with her and Just Janice on a yeah. Wednesday. Yeah, Just Janice starts at 5, right? 5.30. 5.30. Central. Central. And then Art by Julie goes just after. And then hmm. we go at 6 o'clock. We do. Five, so it's 5.30, 5.45, and then we go at 6. Oh, okay. Jeremy, what are you, what are you, do you have any comments on my composition? No, I think it looks great. I still have enough paint to tilt a little bit more if I needed to. I would tilt some of the blue off in that. Really? Okay, maybe not. Well, I don't know. I do. I, I kind of like, I li like I like it in yours. I do like the turquoise blue. Well, then leave it because it looks really pretty. But I really do love this part here. I'm wondering whether I could anchor that over the corner. No, I wouldn't. No? No. What about this list? No, I love that. Okay. Yeah, this is what we do. We talk about these things <laughs> offline. It's, it's mainly to convince each other not to do things. Rather not than, to touch it. Not rather than to do them, right? Yeah. I'm always like, do you think I should? He's like, no. Do you think I should do that? No. But then, like, you see, this is, you get to hear now just how bossy the show pony is. <laughs> you always think it's me because I leave it in, but I take out his bossiness. See, actually, he bosses me around about 60% of the time. I do boss him around. No, yeah, that's not the case at all. No, you're, you're Bossy Boots. Yeah. That's a good nickname. I, w I can't wait. I cannot wait for a pigment to be called Bossy Boots. I <laughs> hope they name it after me. Uh, oh, no, I wanted one called Pomp. No, what did I want? Shifty. Someone said I'm Shifty. I was like, I you're don't not know. Shifty. I don't know. I didn't think that either, but... No, you're yeah. not Shifty. You're Bossy Boots. Okay, whatever. So we're just taking a craft stick here now, and... We're rubbing this along the edge of the canvas. Yes. Just to stop anything being pulled off, to catch the, to get the, to get those drips, please be careful. Don't scrape the edges of your canvas. Yeah. And because that base coat was that wonderful green, I don't mind if there's a little bit of it left on the corners because it fits in with the composition anyway. Yeah. I love this. Yeah, I'm I really happy with these. I love these colors. Obvious wet differences here is you've still got these wonderful big lines on Jeremy's and yeah. this ring that he created yeah. and then stretched out. And even though there is a lot of turquoise here, I can absolutely still see the, the veining. Oh yeah, I love the veining. Whereas with the straight paw, you get all these fingerlings. These yeah. these little things here are called they fingerlings. Look like, they look little like little flames. ghosts, little flames. flames. Yeah. Breath is breathing out the side of our head. If anyone knows Clue out there, you'll know what we're talking about. Um, I love this. I love seeing the same colors in two techniques side by side. I hope that this made sense. I hope now that you can see the difference in these two techniques and you'll go and do them and recreate, recreate them yourself. Show Pony, let's take them all in for a close-up. Yes. And I'm going to torch this one off again one last time. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. So there you have it, folks. There you have it. I hope these lovely people at home can hear us over him gnawing on I this. I know, this, he's like chewing on this little bone like on crazy. This antler. We should have given him the silicone version of it, which oh. he doesn't. <gasps> Do you want that one instead? No, no? it doesn't okay. love that one quite as much. It doesn't taste like meat. Um, Jeremy, talk to me about your ring paw. Um, I really liked it. I thought it was really, uh, really beautiful. It had 
I put a little bit too much of that phthalo turquoise, the first color that I put in there, mm. um, and it left some big streaks of that uh, in the uh, in the composition. It did. Which I didn't mind actually nope. in the end. I thought it made it look really pretty. Well, it, it mixed really beautifully with the little bit of white that you put in. Yeah. And and then you created this really lovely kind of ombre of, yeah. of turquoise to like this beautiful green. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I but I do agree when you poured the turquoise in your cup, I was like, mm, okay. Yeah, I got a little carried away. That's on that where one. we're going with this one. Um, I loved it though. I really enjoyed the final composition. I love that the pieces are different but similar. You know, side by side, they almost look like a pair. You can totally see Jeremy's rings, but in mine, you've got those blending of the colors. Yeah. And then those really wonderful- All those fingerlings. Fingerlings yeah. that kind of look like they're just holding on to parts of the composition, yeah. which I really love. Yeah, I really liked this straight pour. And I hope this was a really obvious way for you to see the difference between the two techniques. Because yeah. we know for a fact there are still really prominent artists out there that get these wrong. I'm not naming any names. I don't know who he's talking about. I'm pleading the fifth on this one. No, naming any names, Kathleen Osmore of Cos Creations <laughs> are. All right. <laughs> we love you, East Coast Girlfriend. So, he's so that, being terrible. So there you have it. Um, we have really enjoyed this episode. We'll do yeah. more of these in the future for sure. But this this coming weekend, Sunday, we'll probably just be back to normal kind of side not side by side pouring. We've got some big blobs yeah. coming up for you soon. What are you excited about in the future, Jezebel? Oh my gosh, I have a few ideas for stuff that uh, I got inspired by Nate Bright, actually, okay. that he's done on his channel okay. um, that are beautiful. I got inspired by art by Julie E. She did this beautiful, stunning, uh, uh, what do you call it, yeah, split cup. Yeah, split cup, yeah, straight Yeah, she did a split cup, straight pour, it. like spinning it mm. with these gorgeous colors. I'm going to have to steal those colors from you, Julie, because they are amazing. Southwestern, Southwestern jewelry. Southwestern jewelry. Yeah, like turquoise. And beautiful, like, beautiful. Yeah, pour. just beautiful pour. I so, think we even talked about it at the table because we were both so gobsmacked over it. I know. So, yeah, so I'm going to, uh, I got really inspired by that. So, thank you, Julie. Thank you, Julie, indeed. Um, and if you're watching this on Wednesday, then hopefully you will have just seen something that Just Janice and Art by Julie did yeah. as well because we've got our mini train today, too. Yeah. So, thank you to everyone for being here with us. Thank you for all of the patrons who follow us. And we look forward to being back here with you again on Sunday. Absolutely. All right, guys. Have a great week, everyone. Be safe. Travel home safe and poor can, and we'll see you on Sunday. Bye, guys. <laughs>